In recent weeks, days, we have all been reminded of the horrific fate of eight-year-old Tori Stafford, who went missing three years ago in Woodstock. My guests understand the pain that parents of murdered children live with. They want to share the hope that they have found. Ed and Sylvie Teague are here from Spencerville, which is near Brockville, right. which right. is near Ottawa, for those <laughs> in parts of the country who need that help. Dad and stepmom to Jenny. Uh, tell us first, we made some approach years ago and it was just too soon. You contacted us and said, we, we want to come and tell this story. Why is that? Well, the reason we want to tell the story is we now believe that we can help other people that have gone through what we've gone through. And uh, we just want to reach out because that's what God asks us to do, reach out. I'm sure just looking at this poster that I'm sure in the Ottawa area is still familiar. Here's Jennifer. <sighs> she went missing, remind us the date. Uh, she went missing on Wednesday, September the 8th, 2005. She was 10 minutes from home. That's no more than 10 minutes. What ultimately did you discover happened? Well, ultimately we found out that uh, she met some friends after she uh, had finished work and they were sitting there talking and they split up. But unbeknownst to them, there was a young man there at the same spot and his ultimate goal that night was he wanted to murder a young girl. And Jennifer just happened to be going in the direction that he was going. It could have been either one of them, depending on the route they had taken. So it just happened to be Jennifer. Now this young man was using a lot of drugs. And ultimately, guilt would expose him. He actually turned himself in. Yes. Yes, he did. And that was through God's help, because that was our prayers. Uh, the police had very few leads to go on. And they were, they were working very hard on this case. And this young man one night decided to have a bunch of magic mushrooms. And he stripped naked and went racing down the streets, screaming, I killed Jennifer Teague, I killed Jennifer Teague. And of course they took him to the hospital to bring him down. And all the time that he's in that state, of course the police aren't allowed to question him. So when he was able, when he recovered, then they asked him and he said, oh no, I had nothing to do with that. At that point in time, he really became a person of interest. And it was two weeks later that uh, without the influence of drugs, he just happened to walk into a store in Bar Haven and he didn't know who he walked up to, but it happened to be an off-duty policeman. And he said, I killed Jennifer Teague. Now you attribute this unusual conclusion to much prayer, but it represents nine months of, of torment as well. You, what, did you, of, what did you call it, Sylvie? A birth of hope, because we had been praying and waiting and praying and waiting, and we weren't going to give up, uh, and he mentioned it so many times in the interviews, and um, we considered it a birth of hope. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It. Here's every, almost every article. Uh, includes or highlights the faith foundation that I am sure is the secret to your survival Absolutely. In, in all of this. And really, Sylvie, you, I mean, God's preparation, and I don't say this glibly, but thankfully, uh, goes all the way back to your friendship when, Ed, you were going through a very difficult season of life. Yes, that's true. Very true. And she brought me to the Lord. She was instrumental in leading me to the Lord and ultimately to serve the Lord. And then you had serious back issues that summer. I had a lot of serious issues. Back issues was just one of them, actually. But um, yeah, I had been sick for actually a few years. And um, the key was to stay away from stress, the doctor told me. And we had just, I'd just gone back to work on the Tuesday. We had lunch with uh, Carrie and Jenny, and we had a great time. Future looked bright. 
and um, Thursday when we got home we got the call and stay away from stress. <laughs> you were just so, two days back to work, am yes, I right? Yes. You had also made a resolve and this is very yes. precious. Give me, tell us what it was and what the timing of that was in relation to Jen's death. Well, it was in August um, because I had been so sick and, you know, we just didn't want it to let us, let it get us down. We wanted to still be strong and, and so we, we said, we were driving down the road in our a vehicle and we said, no matter what, we're going to praise God through anything. And he's like, we can beat anything. Because at one point they thought I had cancer. So, and he's like, don't worry. I'm, we're going to go through this together. And so that's when we actually um, made that. It was in August, so mid-August. You'd established yourself in a posture of honoring God, trusting Him, whatever. That's right. Yeah, it was. Um, I didn't know what the whatever was going to be. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, we didn't know what the whatever was going to be, but it it did uh, it did give us a great foundation, uh, and we knew that we could get through it. We just knew we could get through it, and it was when she was sick that I really learned how to pray. Because I, I, I had faith that God could heal me and, and make everything work out. <coughs> and I just couldn't understand. And one morning on my way, um, when I, was, I got, usually he would help me up out of bed. That's how sick I was. And I could hear him praying. I was like, oh, that's why I'm, he's teaching him how to pray. And he learned how to pray. So the timing was impeccable, as they say. <laughs> On Friday, there was a guilty charge for Michael Rafferty in the murder of Tori Stafford. The parents are working on healing. You make it very clear that justice doesn't bring closure. In fact, that that word is really a misnomer. Yes. Talk to us about that. Well, you're always going to miss your child, and closure does not exist. Justice brings partial closure. You will always miss your child. Something somewhere will uh, tweak your memory, uh, tweak thoughts of, the, of your child the way you remember. And uh, we're out for dinner on <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, just happened to sit down, and right beside us there was a bunch of young girls, soccer players. Like Jenny uh, was. Like Jennifer was, sitting there, and I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes. So, it's, so. It, it comes and it goes, yeah. but it's, there's no real closure. It's not like a, it, it, it is a wound, but it doesn't, it, the scars are still there, but you learn how to move on. God helps you make a new life and make a new memory. Um, so you treasure those ones that you have. The passing of a loved one is a Mack truck, yes. regardless. Mm -hmm. But a violent death is haunting because you don't know what your loved one suffered. You don't know how traumatic that was. That has to play into it, uh, in, into the ongoing grief. Well, it, it does. Uh... And it, as, in, as in the Rafferty case, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and in our case, uh, we do know what uh, young Tori went through. And uh, we do know what my uh, daughter went through eventually. But it was at the trial that we found out exactly what she went through. And uh, I shouldn't say the trial, really. It was basically a plea, uh, a plea of uh, guilty by the... Uh, accused and of course they have to read a statement of facts that had come out and that's when we really found out what she had gone through. Could you have done this without your church family support? Oh absolutely not. Oh my goodness no. No we couldn't have got, we couldn't have done it without uh, our church family and when I talk about our church family at that time our church family was around the world. I mean my brother had been in uh, contact with people in the Philippines. Uh, we had people in Florida praying for us. In England. In England. We knew that in Africa they were praying for us. So it's all... So yeah. God's family is a, is a massive family. What has impressed me here in the time you've been with us the last couple of hours is that you've been this close, this comforting, this nurturing. We know the statistics are deplorable 
for marriages mm -hmm. that have to endure this kind of trauma. What has kept you strong as a couple? I believe it's our faith in God. It's, it's our faith in God has kept us together and uh, knowing that we made a decision that no matter what we could go through, we could get through everything. And um, during the time of our, uh, our, our real deepest uh, despair, God was the rock. Mm -hmm. He was the rock that held us, but she was my second rock. Yeah. <laughs> you think you rock, put, Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> we put God first. I think yeah. that was the bottom line. Mm -hmm. We put God first. And if you put God first, I heard this line before, if you put God first, you'll never come in second. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that's what he did for us. There's certainly God's hugs from heaven along the way. And one of the most precious what would have been Sylvie's ninth, Sylvie, what would have been Jennifer's 19th birthday. You were at her gravesite. Tell us about that special moment. Well, it was, it was unbelievable because there was, it was a, a, a big event. There was a large group of her friends there. The family was there. Uh, and they came not to mourn her, but to celebrate her life. And they released balloons, and the balloons were up in the air, and it was uh, it was quite a, quite an event. Excuse me, I think I'm leaking here. <laughs> there goes my makeup. <laughs> and I understand that the sun broke through in a glorious yes, way. Did. And did. what did you see in the sky? Well, I saw a cross. I looked up and I saw a cross in the sky, and I knew Jenny was okay. God's good. This is just a little interesting side note in your own spiritual formation, Sylvie. I'm just thrilled that Circle Square Ranch had a part to play yes. in the strong faith that you have. Yes. Yeah, it's um, uh, believing in God is, uh, I, I guess it's been simple for me because I grew up in a faith uh, household and um, the, it was amazing the first time that I did go to Circus Square Ranch to see all the kids my age that were involved in Christianity. So it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, and it made an impact in my life. So, yeah. Wonderful. You know, one of the things I haven't mentioned, and it makes you angry to read it, but it seems to be a common occurrence. There was a time where in that waiting room, the police, or at least the public, we're looking to you, Ed, as the possible murderer. I just can't imagine the agony of well, that. Well, the, the, the public was looking at me that way, but the police weren't. The police, um, we had established exactly where, where we were the night that Jennifer went uh, missing. Unfortunately, my wife couldn't remember where we were. <laughs> But we, 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 <laughs> oh, okay. so. we were actually, we were actually at a, uh, at a, at church, the Wednesday night service. And then right after church, there was a reception or a, it's a, shower. a shower for our pastor and his wife that were getting ready to have twins. Yeah. Well, I knew where we were. I just couldn't, there was a time gap and we had gone shopping for the gift and it was just not in my mind. I just couldn't remember that. But yeah, the, they had him listed as the number two suspect. And of course, the uh, off-duty police officer that found her body was considered number one. And, uh, but God was good because our detective also was a Christian. Uh -huh. And uh, we were basically surrounded by a lot of Christians uh, in, uh, during that time period, so. Well, our time is up. There's so much more I'd love to ask you, but I, I don't think I need to ask what your encouragement would be for, for grieving families. I, I think I know where you're gonna send them. Well, if you've got no place to go, go to the Lord. He will hold you in his arms. He will love you no matter what. And when all else is gone, he'll still be there. You have two older sons. Yes, I do. Good to know. Yeah. Wonderful that you would come today. Thank, Thank you, you so, much, for having so us. much. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that if you're in a place of pain, any need today, you know that our phone lines are available 24-7. We will be back.